As the Second World War came to a conclusion, the Allied forces and the Red Army would come across the true horrors of the Nazi regime. Much of the Holocaust and the mass extermination of the Jews took place at concentration camps, however many more were executed by groups of SS soldiers, such as the Einsatzgruppen. These men would follow up the advancing German army, and deal with executing those inside Nazi-occupied territory. Footage would emerge after the conflict of these horrors, with groups of innocent people being forced by the Germans to dig huge pits before lining up in them and being shot by the murderous SS. In Poland, the Germans were incredibly brutal, massacring dozens of thousands of civilians in the early part of the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. But they managed to get a group together to help them clear up the crimes of the SS and the Wehrmacht. These people were forced to cover up the horrors of the Nazi regime. Join us today as we look at the Verbrunnungskommando, Warschau, the Polish slaves forced to clean up after the Nazis. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Warsaw Uprising was a 63-day conflict, which emerged as the Polish underground resistance rose up to attempt to liberate Warsaw from German and Nazi occupation. The uprising was planned to occur, with the retreat of the German soldiers from Poland, as the Soviets were advancing. There was little outside support, but it was the largest effort undertaken by resistance movements during World War II. The Poles tried to force the German army out of the city before the Soviets occupied it, and initially they did rather well taking control of most of the city of Warsaw from the Germans. But when the reinforcements went in, the Polish resistance were forced into defensive positions, with the Luftwaffe and German artillery divisions bombarding them for 63 days. The Allies, in particular Winston Churchill, begged to help, but nothing would come, and eventually the result of the Warsaw Uprising was a resounding German victory. During and following the Warsaw Uprising, a large number of Polish civilians were massacred in huge scores by the Germans and their collaborators. These mass executions resulted in the deaths of thousands in nothing more than cold blood. One of these was the Wola massacre, in which between 70,000 and 90,000 Polish civilians were murdered by the Germans upon Hitler's order to kill anything that moves to stop the Warsaw Uprising. The scenes throughout Wola were incredibly shocking, whole families including children and even babies being shot on the spot, with the elderly also being killed. Soldiers from the Wehrmacht and the collaborators went through hospitals, killing patients in their beds, as well as nurses and doctors. Dogs were even let loose into the streets to sniff out survivors so they could also be killed. The Germans hoped that by committing atrocities such as Walla, that took place on the 5th to the 12th of August, that the mass population inside Warsaw would decide to end their resistance. With this it had the other effect, with the Polish resistance strengthening in their belief and cause but ultimately they would lose. To clean up the atrocities and crimes inside of Warsaw, the Germans set up the Verbrennungskommando Warschau, or the Warsaw Burning Detachment. This was a slave labour unit made by the SS following the Walla massacre to deal with the clean-up operation after. Its role was to remove any evidence of the campaign or genocide that took place during the Warsaw Uprising. The members were forced to collect the corpses which in the streets had been stacked up in huge piles, and then destroy them. They were burned in huge open-air pyres and fires inside of Warsaw itself. The Verbrennungs Commando had a huge amount of work, based on the fact that Heinrich Himmler stated, Every inhabitant of Warsaw is to be shot. Prisoners will not be taken. This town is to be razed to the ground. As soon as the uprising started and the executions began, the Germans began to build up a group of several dozen Polish men who had been captured to help the Germans clean up after the genocide. These men formed the cremation commando and were forced to go through the ruins of the city and collect dozens of thousands of bodies. They were forced to carry out this work under strict supervision and in their first week of working they managed to cremate over 6,000 bodies. One surviving member of the Warsaw Burning Detachment rose after the war of his first day in the corpse disposal unit. He said, As far as one could see, the courtyard square was filled with the dead bodies. They were lying in the full sun, some piled up in the centre, others strewn next to each other, or propped individually against the edges, with hands reaching towards the brick wall, as if they had tried to save themselves. 
They must have been herded there as a large group and had grenades thrown at them as their bodies were terribly mangled. He would then say, At first we picked out the corpses that were the least mutilated, but then we didn't care. The unprotected hands tear on blood encrusted clothing, grab rotten limbs. Swathes of scared flies buzz around us with an angry hum, pounce on our sweat drenched bodies, crawl over our lips, and try to sit on our eyes. Just don't give up. Don't let yourself be pushed down by those bloody decaying bodies at any cost. Perhaps chance will show us an escape route today, tomorrow or the day after. The group of workers were constantly guarded and were forced with getting the rotting corpses out of the rubble and then burn them in huge heaps and piles. Much of Warsaw had been reduced to rubble, so part of the job was excavating the victims of the shootings from the rubble. If they refused to do anything, the members of the detachment were killed on the spot. There were at its busiest two groups of 50 men in the Verbrennings commando, and they were told not to obey orders from officers of other units, just to take specific orders from SS Oversturmfuhrer Neumann, their commander. Similar to what would happen in Auschwitz in the Canada section of the camp, the work detachment were forced to hand over dental gold, as in gold teeth, valuables and jewellery found on the corpses. These would be passed over to the Germans and then shipped back to Germany and also morosely they had to report any victims still alive so they could be shot a further time. So the group would find the dead bodies of those executed by the Germans and then burn them in huge pits. It was noted how the stench of burning rotting corpses could be smelt for miles and that several layers of corpses needed to be piled up along with enough combustible material to light a significant fire. The remains were covered in gasoline and also wood to ensure that the fire would burn high and well. Heinrich Himmler planned for after the group had completed their jobs for the men of the Slade detachment to be executed themselves. This would prevent the crimes of the Germans being told after the war. So huge fires would take place inside Warsaw with the group burning the victims of such massacres. Many of the ashes were dumped in bomb holes and they were then exhumed after the Second World War and reburied in Warsaw cemeteries across the city. Within these were 5,500 kilograms of human remains from one avenue, over 2,000 kilograms from a military prison, and thousands of more kilograms of remains from different areas of the city. After the Second World War, not one German who participated in the crimes committed during the Warsaw Uprising was brought to justice for their crimes. Many massacres took place in the area, to deter the public from rising up. Many members of the Verbrennungs Commando Warschau were executed after their duties cleaning up the bodies had been completed, or they were killed in the vicious fighting as the Germans levelled the city. Some were even forced to become human shields and protect German soldiers from sniper fire as they advanced. Some were even forced to provide fire against the Polish liberators and resistors and fight alongside the enemy Germans. The story of the Verbrunner's Commando Warsaw is an incredibly sad one. It's a story of a group of slave labourers forced to clean up the horrific massacres of the SS and the Wehrmacht. The men who were forced to burn the remains of these men, women and children, who were murdered in cold blood had no choice. They simply had to do their duties to escape death themselves. As the Warsaw Uprising was coming to an end, an order to end the indiscriminate killing of Polish civilians was sent by the Germans and the civilians were forced then to travel to concentration or labour camps. The work of the Verbrennungs Commando would have been incredibly difficult, and it shows us the extents people were forced to go during the Second World War to escape death themselves. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.